This is by Erica Gonzalez. The title of the article is Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are technically 17th cousins, 30th of November 2017. So Meghan Markle actually has royal blood in her. Now in the Bible, what we're going to find out in Genesis chapter 3 is that Satan, he has his own seed actually. Now, this is like a literal physical seed. So Satan, clearly, he has a physical seed. The only thing is, we don't know who they are or what they are. But there's no doubt there is a physical seed that Satan has. Now, in the Bible, what you're going to find out is that we see it clearly back at Genesis. So in the days of Genesis, up till Noah's flood... It was very clear at Genesis chapter 6 that Satan had his own physical seed running around because the sons of God intermingled with the daughters of men. So that's why the Bible says Noah's flood had to wipe out all flesh. See? So Satan's physical seed, it was wiped out. However, what you're going to find out later on in the Bible throughout the, old, the rest of the Old Testament, we see them mentioned again. For example, you see in the book of Numbers, when they conquered the promised land, there are these giants. You see in the book of Samuel, when David and his sons were con uh, conquering the world, you see the giants mentioned again. So the thing is, is that even though this was definitely there, the physical seed was definitely there at Genesis, Noah's flood wiped them out, but then there were like little remnants going around throughout the Old Testament. So because they were interbreeding with the people after Noah's flood, there was no record that they were wiped out again or God wiped them out. All we know is that there were remnants here and there. So it's very logical to say that this carried on <clears throat> throughout the New Testament. Because if these people gave offsprings and they gave offsprings, then the genes carried on. Now the thing is this, we do know that the tribulation, it definitely has to happen. Why do you say that, Pastor? Because we're going to look at Daniel 2 as well. So we're going to find out in Daniel chapter 2 that the physical seed, Satan's physical seed, it mingles with humans. It has to happen during the tribulation. So think about it, if, if these two are definite things, See that? If these two are definite things that has to happen, and we see a little bit of remnants in between here, it would be logical to say that today in the New Testament, there can be little remnants. Now, I'm not saying that there are, but it is very possible. It is very possible. There's that verse at Hebrews that we have to treat our guests well. Why? Because we don't know if we might entertain angels unawares. So it's very possible we can see little remnants here and there. But I do know that definitely here, definitely here it happened, and there were remnants recorded throughout the Old Testament. So it is logical to say that there are some remnants that were scattered throughout here. Now, the thing is this, is that that bloodline that Satan has, he has to maintain this bloodline because this bloodline has to tackle with the bloodline of the Messiah. Genesis 3 recorded that, so we're going to look at right here. Then we'll continue on with this royal wedding, what I'm going to get at. Look at Genesis chapter 3, <clears throat> and we will read verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. So God is speaking to the serpent, Satan. You and woman. So there are two different seeds that's contrasted here. His seed versus Eve's seed. We'll continue reading on right here, uh, between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. So Satan's seed and Eve's seed. It shall bruise thy head. So Eve's seed's going to bruise the seed of Satan, and thou shalt bruise his heel. But Satan can only uh, bruise the heel of Eve's seed. Now think about this. We know who the seed from Eve is, right? It's Jesus Christ, correct? Now is that a literal physical seed? Absolutely. It's a literal physical seed. So following that context of that verse, Genesis 3, you can't just automatically make Satan's seed spiritualized, contrasted with Eve's 
seed as physicalized. You can't do that. It makes more sense by context. His seed versus her seed. If her seed is physical, his seed is physical as well. That just makes sense through the flow of context. But not only that, it makes perfect sense that if there's a royal bloodline that Jesus came out from Eve, why do you think Satan will not do that with his copycat? And he has to copycat Jesus Christ, the Antichrist. So the Antichrist will have to have his own royal bloodline as well. That sounds very logical. Now the thing is, is that there are some people who suspect that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, that they're somehow connected with the bloodline of the Illuminati, stuff like that. I don't know how much of that is true. But I do know this, is that it's very possible. And I do know this, is that not everything in our world is as innocent and free as you think. There's undoubtedly, there's clearly no doubt, certain controlling, controlling elites out there. That one is an undoubtable fact. We just don't know uh, clearly what the specific individuals are. But to maintain the royal bloodline, we see that it wouldn't be a coincidence then that Meghan Markle, who's marrying the royal bloodline of Prince Harry, that she's related to him somehow, and she has royal bloodline as well. Originally, we wouldn't think that way, but it turned out to be. Prince Harry may not be marrying a commoner after all. Research finds that Meghan Markle actually has royal blood in her. The actress is a direct descendant of England's King Edward III, who ruled from 1327 until 1377 according to genealogist Gary Boyd Roberts. That technically makes her and Harry 17th cousins. With this newfound genealogical connection, Markle's other royal very distant cousins include Her Majesty the Queen and Princess Diana, the organization states. She's also distantly related to U.S. presidents like George W. Bush, George H.A.W. Bush, Gerald Ford, Richard Nixon, and Calvin Coolidge. Now, some of you who have studied some of the conspiracy realms, you've heard about the Bushes connected with the skull and bones. So this is pretty interesting that her bloodline's connected to theirs. Continuing reading, speculation on Markle's royal heritage isn't new. Earlier research on her lineage appeared to show that one of Harry's ancestors, King, King Henry VIII, beheaded one of her ancestors, Lord Hussey, first Baron Hussey of Sleaford, in the 1500s. Luckily, relations between their families have improved since then. Now, the thing is this, is that the Antichrist, he ha it would sound logical that he would come from royal bloodline. Could it be Meghan Markle, Prince Harry? I don't know, but it is possible. Because if he copycats Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, who did he come out of? He came out of royal bloodline as well. But not only that, if we are to say that the Antichrist, see, he is known as what? Son of perdition. That's why the Antichrist, uh, the satanic trinity, they use that to show the, uh, the Godhead trinity with the satanic trinity. And the Antichrist, he is represented in the Satanic Trinity as God the Son. See? So, connected as the Son of Satan. Now, the thing is this, is that if the Antichrist comes from such royal bloodline, and then his bloodline is physical, not only that, Satan's physical seed has to come out here. And the Bible did say that Daniel 2, that Satan's physical seed at the tribulation, it is mingling with humans. Go to Daniel 2. Daniel chapter 2. So it sounds logical, and it would make sense, that the Antichrist somehow, through today's current events, he's going to come out from somebody's bloodline today, who's royalty. And that's somehow connected to Satan's genes, Satan's DNA. So you can call that reptilian blood, etc., or whatever. Or the bloodline of the Illuminati from 13 families, or I forgot how many families. But look at Daniel chapter 2. And notice right here, concerning the end times, we're going to go backwards. Verse 44, and in the days of these kings, whoever these kings are, uh, these kings perhaps could be the Illuminati, 13 bloodlines, I don't know. But anyway, these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. 
but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Okay, so in Daniel 2, 44, we see that this is God's kingdom on earth. So the millennial kingdom, Daniel 2, 44. So there's no doubt God's kingdom conquers what? This previous kingdom of the devil. Okay, what is this devil's kingdom described as then? Of these kings. Let's go backwards. 244 is millennium. Let's go backwards. What happened here? 43. Uh, no, actually, let's start at verse 41 through 43. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron. So there's a clay mingling with this iron here. The kingdom shall be divided. Okay, it's referring to this kingdom right here. But there shall be in it of the strength of the iron. For as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. So this kingdom, it has the element of the iron, whoever the iron is. But this iron is what? Mingled with clay, whoever clay is. We're going to find out who the iron is and who the clay is. Let's keep reading. Verse 42, and as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay. See, there's a mingling. So the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. <laughs> Why? And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they, so that's the iron, whoever they are, shall mingle themselves with who? The seed of men. There is your clay. Well, see, we see right here that the clay is referring to seed of men. Well, there's your humans right here. So we can't say that this iron here is referring to humans because the humans is already taken here. Who's this iron then? It's other beings. Well, what other beings then? All you have to do is compare with Genesis 6, right? Genesis 6 shows that these other beings mingled themselves with the humans, and then God had to drown them all out. That's why these strange bloodlines came out, these giants, these mighty men of old, men of renown in Genesis 6. So this has to happen right here. We see that. It, there has to be a mingling. So it makes logical sense the Antichrist would come from some sort of bloodline through here. It would sound logical. Now, again, I want to stress again, I don't know if we see, uh, if we see this today, if we see this today, this uh, mingling of blood or these remnants going on. But I do know this. It has to happen here at the tribulation. And there were scattered remnants right here at this time period. And it definitely happened in Genesis. So what would make this the exception then? See, wouldn't it be logical that if it's crushed in these two timelines that there probably were remnants scattered about? So this is a possibility. It's a possibility. And it also sounds logical too because the Antichrist, he has to copycat Jesus Christ through some kind of bloodline. He comes from royalty. But you notice that this royal bloodline, it's royal blood, see? Meghan Markle's royal blood. The Antichrist, he's going to have to come out of royal blood. That one I do believe. He's going to have to come out of some kind of royal, pure blood because Jesus Christ did that. That one I can believe. The Antichrist has to come from some kind of royal bloodline. That way he can uh, have connections with all political high powers and kingdoms and not only that, it imitates Jesus Christ who came from kings himself. But what's really interesting is this, is that if we believe that such bloodline was scattered across, you give it enough time, then how do we not know that us today are contaminated with some of the blood, right? Because you saw Meghan Markle's bloodline, you know, 17th cousin from Pr Prince Harry, etc. If all of you look back at your genealogy, you're going to find something connected somewhere there. In fact, some people are scared to look at their bloodline because they're afraid to be connected to some of these uh, elites or strange bloodlines here. That's why look at Matthew 23. This is interesting. Look at Matthew 23. What are you getting at, Pastor? What I'm getting at is this, is that it's, it, I believe this. I believe that if there were these remnants, based on if, that these remnants were scattered throughout the Old Testament, it makes sense that they've contaminated the rest of us today, humans today. Because they have to give birth, they spread out. Okay, is that a problem right here? Well, it makes sense. Satan's known as serpent, right? A snake. 
now you know what you and i are known as when we're lost without christ in salvation when we go to hell look at matthew 23 and verse 33 ye what serpents e generation see that a bloodline of what vipers how can he escape the damnation of hell now let me show you a more wild one look at mark 9 mark 9 mark chapter 9 Here's the thing, is that when you go to hell, your true nature is revealed. Didn't you know that? When you go to hell, your true nature is revealed on what you are. We're going to look at Mark chapter 9. Notice what the Bible says about people who burn in hell. We're going to look at Mark chapter 9 and verse 43. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maim than having two hands to go into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. People who go to hell are known as what in verse 44? Where there are what? Worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. How about that? See that? That's why it makes sense. We are known as children of the devil throughout the Bible back then. We were known as the children of the devil. So, Yes, spiritually, there's no doubt. Spiritually, we became children of Satan. We were lost in sin. We were serpents. We were worms. But it could be more physical than you could have thought. It could be more physical than you could have thought. Well, then what's the solution? What's the cure? It's that other blood that replaces that blood. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. That blood of Jesus Christ is what you and I were born again by. And because you and I are born again by the blood of Jesus Christ, we become a part of His bloodline. But it also makes a lot of sense, and it's interesting why our bodies, after we die, God can't take our bodies up to heaven. See? If we were contaminated by this bloodline, God cannot take the body to heaven. What He has to do is that through that blood of Jesus Christ, when the rapture sounds, so the rapture is before the tribulation, that way you don't have to worry about joining this bloodline of the Antichrist. When the rapture occurs before the tribulation, what does God do with our body? He transforms it. He transforms our corruptible body to be fashioned like His glorious body. But what happens to people who don't get raptured to heaven or who are not saved? What happens to their bodies? Their bodies become what? Worms. Their father, the devil. Where the worm dieth not, the fire is not quenched. E serpents, e generations of vipers. How can he escape the damnation of hell? That's why if I were you today, I'd get saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ so that he can transform your life. And boy, he sure did. Look at 1 Corinthians, uh, Colossians, excuse me. Look at Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. He transformed you, you got to understand, because of His blood. We're going to look at Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13. So this verse shows that there's a transformation by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we don't have to worry about our nature after we die. Body and soul, see, physically and spiritually, the Lord takes care of it. Colossians 1 verse 13, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness... And hath what? Translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So he transformed us. But it's done through what means? Verse 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Even the forgiveness of sins. See that? It's all done through the blood. So you got to realize this. Is that all of us spiritually without Jesus Christ's blood are the spiritual seed of Satan. But, possibly, possibly, it could be more literal than you think. If these giants, based on the condition, if these giants' remnants scattered, and a lot of people, I mean, you got to realize when you look back at history, we're all related somehow. I mean, you got to realize this. We all came from a common ancestor anyway, right? Adam and Eve. And then, uh, well, after Noah's flood, Noah and his three sons, right? So all of us are somehow connected anyways. So based on this condition, it's possible that we may have carried some sort of physical gene from Satan's physical line, Satan's physical seed. 
But I and the Antichrist, he does have to come from royal bloodline, royal bloodline, and he's coming in as the son of perdition, and this literal physical mingling has to happen at the tribulation. Bottom line is for you, the bottom line for you is that you don't have to go through this mess. You can get raptured up when you receive the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation. And that's all you need to know. And you don't have to do research and worry about which kind of bloodline I'm connected with some kind of weird Illuminati elite or reptilian or blah, 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 blah. Some people waste so much time on that rather than checking their own record that they're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. And now that you're saved by the blood, what are you going to do with it? You should spend more time with that rather than your dark side. Well, who wants to spend more time on their dark side? Why don't you spend more time on the right side where Jesus Christ saved you from and concentrate on growing on that one?